So I'm just looking at the fuselage. I've popped the servos in last night whilst listening to Jeff's live stream, No Alabama. Now I'm going to put in the push rods. So the push rods on the Mark 1 had a adjustable kink in it and they went forward to the pre-prepared, pre-prepared look horns um by the way i had a this is only a three millimeter balsa and i don't know how it happened but i stuck two pieces together and they wouldn't separate the only thing i could do was to cut out the bottom piece heat heat the adhesive up and peel it off and then just cut a patch to go in there hence this slightly darker color what I thought I'd do on this one, the push rod's a little bit different. I'm going to have two pieces like I have on my um, small models and just join them with heat shrink and a bit of uh, overlap, a bit of uh, CA as well. That should be fine. You could try and cut it in one length. The other thing, of course, I'm going to have is they're going to bend. So I've got to put a guide. On the other one, I put the guide down here, which worked quite well. Might need two guides, you never know. If I'm gonna have another guide, it'll be up here somewhere. So let's put the join about there, I think. I'll just scoop those in. Right, I've already centered the servos, so no problem there. So I'm gonna overlap that and join it with heat shrink. So I'm going to cut it about, make it about there. So the technique is just this, you slide that on there, you slide that on there, bring it back over, heat shrink, job done. I'll just run CA in around that. And because this is inside the fuselage, I can't really put a cigarette lighter in there or anything. So I'm going to fire up the soldering iron and just run it over there and that will shrink it up. What you want to try and do is get underneath it a little bit as well. On. Okay, you can see the push rods are really bending there, so they will definitely need <laughs> some mid supports. Need to get that bottom bit glued in. All right, servos in. Job done. Tick off. I have a receiver to install. That's going to be up here somewhere. ESC is going to sit in here. Once I've got the pilot position, I'm going to glue the leg retaining boss wood underneath. Shame we can't go there actually and protect the, protect the servos. Things are a slightly different place here. But it'll be okay. Can't have the. <laughs> put the body there and the legs back there. The other option is to make a pilot prone looking up. But I quite like the look of the legs, so a bit of fun. It'll need something over the top. He wants to look at the um, ESC. Right, we've got an element of right first, one or two degrees, similar, maybe two degrees, maybe two and a half, three degrees down first. And a little bit of right first. I want to um, put some magnets on the side for the uh, pilot. So I'm going to glue a pair of those on the inside, just there, and the pilot can clip onto those. They're a bit stronger. And the thing is, when you're fitting any magnet, make sure you don't glue it on back to front. The easiest way to do that is to stick it on already. Noise just rough it up myself, and that also reminds you which is the side that you're gluing as well. Do one at a time, I think. 
Don't want to glue the magnet to the paper, so I'll never get it off. So I'll glue that in there like that. So there's one glue in. It should be stuck. Yep. Do the same with this one. Put that in there. Like that. Now this is going to go down through there. If you don't know, if the motor runs backward, just change two of these connections and it will run forward. Want that wire there to go there. That's it. Up and also when you're setting up a V-tail, the up elevator is only half of the movement. The other half is when I go right rudder, uh, sorry, left rudder, it has to be it has to be able to come up even higher. That's plenty of throw. Let's just try the motor, quick blip. also going the right way good result okay legs fitted <laughs> it's funny you can put that in there like that put that under there I might put a little bit of Velcro on the back of that plug just to hold it in tight there. Well, I will actually. Well, it might, and then the wire can clip up under there. Okay, so the plug will just sit in there like that. Keep it off the way when we're landing. So let's work out uh, what we're going to do with the hatch. Um, Easy to hold it on with magnets. It'd be good if it came right over the front to cover up that wire. So let's make something out of uh, 1 8 balsa, 1 16, 1 16th fly. Oh, look at that. Hang on a minute. Let's see if I can get it to fit that. This is from the triplane. That looked cool with all that air holes in it, wasn't it? To get, if I put four of the big magnets in, to get it off, you just slide it and it'll pop off. Right, what I'll do, I'll crack on with this and I'll see you in a minute. I'll glue the other two in and then I'll just slide it off. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys and gals, we are finishing up the Da Vinci Flyer video with... Uh, oh, here they are. <laughs> uh, I've just put a bit of matte lacquer on the hatch so that can go in place, which is that way around. Mind your fingers, Cliff. And the legs obviously clip on. And the pilot. Good strong magnets on it. Uh, so that's it. It's done. It's ready to go. That wraps up the Mark II Da Vinci Flyer build. Just got the maiden flight to come. So if you want to hit the like button down below. I'll see you in the Maiden Flight video. I'll also link to the build, well, the whole playlist for the Da Vinci series. And you can have a look at the development as I've gone along. So this is the Mark II. We'll see how it fares. I've already got a few ideas for the Mark III, just construction ideas, just to really fine tune things. And um, we'll get the project um, moving forward. So I'll link to the playlist here. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers.